Have you arranged to make bail and get out of here? Miss Fontaine, in a full-length ermine coat, was just as uncooperative. Will you, Mr. Neri, have appeared tonight, Miss Fontaine? Their manager led the dancers into hiding after their release. Will we see you this evening, Miss Fontaine? How about you, Rudy? Will we see you this evening on stage? Mary F. and Fontaine have two appearances scheduled for San Francisco tomorrow, one on stage, one in municipal court. Children you are. It's only a job. Get on with it, driver. Yep. Get on. Come on, come on. Get on, get on. Choreographers the world over were now anxious to compose ballets for them, and they in their turn were just as keen to widen their experience, however bizarre the role, particularly Nureyev. In 1975, a gala was organized in New York to aid the school of one of the founding figures of modern dance, Martha Graham. Inevitably, Fontaine and Nureyev were asked to top the bill. Equally inevitably, it was a sellout, though tickets cost up to $10,000 each. Graham had choreographed a short ballet for the occasion, Lucifer, which really was a vehicle for Nureyev. Fontaine's role of Queen of the Underworld was the lesser one, which perhaps was just as well, since she did not appear overjoyed at dancing in bare feet. As usual for New York, the reception was ecstatic. Even so, it must have been a relief for Fontaine to get back to the choreographer who had served her so well, Sir Frederick Ashton, and in particular his Hamlet prelude, Hamlet and Ophelia, a pas de deux composed for them when they again topped the bill at a gala, this time for the Queen's Silver Jubilee at Covent Garden in 1977. It was to be their last filmed appearance.
partnership was something so thrilling and marvellous that it has made a new dimension in ballet history, I would say. Partnerships had been built up in various companies, uh, but never with this um, theatrical element that was added to this particular partnership. So in retrospect, I would say almost unique in the history of modern ballet, certainly. De Margot brought English reserve, great lyricism, incredible musicality, and I think a willingness to give herself to a new experience. Nureyev brought a prodigious temperament, a Leningrad background, and that kind of intensity, that self-immolation, which is typical of Russian dance, the greatest Russian dancers, like Nureyev, like Boryshnikov, like Makarova, destroy themselves on stage for their public. And it is this incandescence, which I think was marvellously set off by the coolness, the control often of Fontaine's roles. The mixture was irresistible. The partnership lingered on for another two years, with their appearances becoming less and less frequent, until De Margot finally retired in 1979, when she was 60. The ending was certainly inevitable, though for Nureyev at least, the manner of it was perhaps not totally amicable, as he confided to Mavis Nicholson in a television interview just two years later. I have a feeling that uh, I've been here, accepted Covent Garden as a partner of Margot Fontaine. The moment she ceased to dance at Covent Garden, uh, I felt there was an incredible urge to demote me and uh, to turn me from identity to non-entity. Only thing I would be serving to fill the house, uh, to be tea cozy, to keep teapot warm, and get rid of as fast as possible. Really? Clear the deck, yeah. Bring public in and clear the deck. Go to America, fill those theaters, kick in the ass, out. Nureyev still dances, and also now directs the massive Paris Opera House Ballet, which in fact is bigger than the Royal. De Margot, however, is a virtual recluse in Panama, caring for